is Samuel Colt, the inventor of the Colt Revolver. Although not many people know his story, Samuel Colt was a very important figure in American history. His revolver was the first ever to be purchased by the Army Ordnance Department and was highly popularized during the Mexican-American War. The advanced mechanism found in his Colt revolver, a rotating cylinder containing six bolts at a time, could launch bullets faster than any other firearm invented before and was a huge improvement over the weapon technology of its time. This made it easy for American troops to outshoot their opponents and, in turn, achieve victory in the war. Samuel Colt's life and inventions were hugely important in our country's westward pursuit. His revolvers helped win a war that gained America a huge amount of territory. Samuel Colt was born on July 19, 1814 to Christopher and Sarah Caldwell Colt, two wealthy residents of near Hartford, Connecticut. At the age of 10, Samuel Colt left school to work for his father, who owned a factory that manufactured silk and woolen products. Between the ages of 10 and 14, Colt returned to school. At 14, Samuel ran away from his Amherst, Massachusetts boarding school to sail to Calcutta, India. While on the ship, young Colt came up with his idea of the six-cylinder pistol from the clutch and locking device of the helmsman's wheel part of the ship. His design was an improvement of earlier but unpopular revolver designs. Colt sailed around the world on the ship, finally returning home to work in his factory once again. At 18, Colt left to tour the country as chemistry lecturer Dr. Colt. The profits he gathered from his two years of touring helped fund the research and invention of the Colt revolver. Using the funds from his chemistry lecturing, Colt finally patented his invention in England and Paris in 1835 and in America in 1836. Although he was not the first to come up with the revolver design, his was by far the most widespread and widely used. Shown here are the papers and correspondences concerning his first patent in America. Colt's early life was immensely important in contributing to his later inventions. Had Colt not worked in his father's factory, he would not have the understanding of chemical dyes and bleaches, two important subjects in his lecture tour. Colt's childhood also prepared him for the task of running a factory later in life. Colt's first small armory was located in Whitneyville, or New Haven, Connecticut. However, this was soon replaced with larger workshops in Hartford. Colt took out a $300,000 credit line, alone without collateral, and put the money towards opening the Patent Arms Company in 1852. It was a huge factory on the banks of the Connecticut River within the city limits of Hartford. His factory included housing, a library, a public hall for his workers, and of course, the iconic Blue Dome. Mark Twain, the famous American novelist, set upon his visit. It comprises a great range of tall brick buildings, and on every floor is a dense wilderness of strange iron machines, a tangled forest of rods, bars, pulleys, wheels, and all the imaginable and unimaginable forms of mechanism. It must have required more brains to invent all those things than would serve to stock 50 senates like ours. The revolvers produced at this factory would soon be commissioned to soldiers and become important devices in America's war to win the West. Colt's revolvers first made their way into the hands of soldiers during the Seminole War, in which 152 caliber six-shot revolving rifles were issued to the 2nd U.S. Dragoons for trial. However, Colt's revolving arms made their first major appearance in the hands of soldiers during the Mexican-American War, in which the United States War Department initially ordered 1,000 six-shot Whitneyville Walker Colt revolvers. Shown here is the actual correspondence between Colt and various members of the War Department concerning that contract. These letters and telegrams are dated from December 1846 to July 1847. At the instance of Captain Walker, the Secretary of War desires you to furnish 1,000 revolving pistols. Your letter of the 16th, in relation to the supplying of 1,000 of your pistols, has been received. I have to inform you that the Secretary of War has appended to the agreement between S.H. Walker and yourself. At the request of Captain Walker, I enclose you a certified copy of the contract for 1,000 of your pistols. This last letter from Colt to the Secretary of War also offers insight on Samuel Colt's skill as a businessman. 
If the government will give me an order for 5,000 pistols, I will reduce the price 20% and I offer proportionate reduction for greater quantity. My workmen are well instructed and will leave me unless I have immediate inducement to keep them together. Colt Steeds for the country would not go unrecognized. In 1854, he was appointed to Major Commandant of the First Troop of Governor's Horse Guard, an honorary title. This shows how he was appreciated during his lifetime. The use of the revolvers in the Mexican-American War helped America win the war and gain territory in the U.S. This war was driven by the American dream of manifest destiny, the idea that America had a right to expand westward. However, the lands that Americans wanted belonged to Mexico. After many battles, most of which were American victories, America won the Mexican-American War with the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo on February 2, 1848. The victory in the war gained America over 500,000 square miles of new territory, namely the Mexican territories of Texas, New Mexico, and Upper California. These territories would become the American states of California, Arizona, and New Mexico, and include parts of Utah, Colorado, Nevada, and Wyoming. Had Colt not invented his revolvers and had them commissioned to soldiers fighting in the war, American victory probably would not have come so easily. But why were these revolvers a help to the troops? This is the Colt Walker Revolver. It was Colt's first popular revolver and was produced in 1847. The Colt Walker was named after Captain Samuel Hamilton Walker, a former Texas Ranger that collaborated with Colt to create the Colt Walker Revolver. He also helped Colt obtain the contract mentioned earlier for use by soldiers. The Walker was a huge improvement over the firearm technology of its time, namely the footlock pistol. This pistol required a piece of flint, a piece of steel, gunpowder, a place for sparks to touch the gunpowder, a piece of paper, and a projectile, and took seven steps in order to shoot one bullet. The Colt Walker, however, required only gunpowder and a projectile, and shot six rounds straight before reloading. Clearly, Colt's revolver was the superior firearm. Soldiers wielding Walker revolvers could load faster and shoot greater amounts of bullets, rendering those using flintlock pistols inferior. Samuel Colt continued to make more innovations and improvements to his revolver design until his death in Hartford, Connecticut on January 10, 1862. He was survived by his wife, Elizabeth Hart Jarvis, and his son, Caldwell Hart Colt. Colt's legacy continued far beyond his death. In 1864, the Colt factory burned down and was redesigned by General William B. Franklin, general manager of the company and a former U.S. Army engineer. The new factory was completed in 1867 and still stands today in Coltsville, a part of the Hartford Historical District. Despite this setback, the Colt Company continued to manufacture firearms, as shown in this 1890s era patent. In 1911, the U.S. Army adopted the Colt 45 caliber automatic designed by John M. Browning as its official handgun. In conclusion, Samuel Colt's life and inventions were very important in America's history. Colt, with his advanced revolvers, won the West and improved the lives of people everywhere with his ingenious innovations. Though his may not be exactly a household name, Colt will certainly go down in history as the man who armed the West.